and you are welcome back. Time to talk some climate change here. You know, at the 25th conference of the parties to the United Nations Framework Convention, climate change uh, begin. It's underway in Madrid, uh, the Spanish capital, and civil society groups, uh, uh, grassroots, and all of that. Nigeria is even well represented at this meeting. Uh, but today we are going to be focusing on um, what Greta Thunberg has achieved and how her protest, her movement, is spreading like wildfire across the board. And to help us uh, dissect all of this is none other than, he's called <laughs> the chief gardener. He is uh, uh, Desmond Majakudumi. He's right here in the studio. It's always good to have you. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, good you morning. know, I, I don't know if you heard Greta, Greta, yes, I, I'm going to be doing another introduction shortly though. Uh, Someone's going to be joining us live from Madrid. Uh, from the NCF. Greta has been named the Times 2019 Pressing of the Year. Mm -hmm. I mean, she, she came with so much force and she's, she's been scolding leaders like, I mean, like their kids. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, a 16-year-old girl getting up in front of the General Assembly of the United Nations with world leaders all over the place. And what does she do? She points her finger in their face Mm. and says, how dare you? But of course, she's got a right to do that because what they are doing is making decisions that are not being activated and by doing that, they are compromising her very future. Why do you think they're calling it a climate emergency? It's an emergency. The house is on fire. You got to put out the fire. And they're just talking, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. So she says, how dare you? My house is on fire. You don't want to put it out. Hmm. All right, you know, it's... All right, let's just pause you for a moment and introduce our guest who is joining us via Skype from yes. Madrid, Spain, Solomon Adefolu. Solomon is a climate action lead NTF. Solomon, good morning and welcome to News Hub. Good morning. Thank Great you for having have me. You. All right, just yesterday, a speech by Greta Thunberg. She accused leaders of making constant attempts to find loopholes to avoid making substantial changes. Now, the same parties that have negotiated every single word and um, sentence in the Paris Agreement. And all of a sudden, we're looking for, you know, uh, legal loopholes, trying not to adhere to the so-called climate change. Uh, they had already uh, signed an agreement for. Now, tell me, does this show that um, the Paris Agreement is just a waste of time and resources? by nations who have come together to sign this pact? Honestly, the Paris Agreement is a very compact agreement, and uh, I wouldn't refer to it as a waste of time. It's one of the agreements that is going to take us to the desired destination to reach a carbon-neutral economy around the world, and uh, a lot more of uh, government, organization, business have been able to uh, sign on to this agreement and uh, we are they are working on it to ensure that we are able to achieve the goals of the Paris Agreement. However, the pace at which this work is going on at the moment is very slow and that's why the cry from Greta Thunberg um, in terms of replacing some of the test of this uh, agreement and negotiation, well, it is something that uh, has to do with uh, the commitment of the government. But what I want us to realize is that it is not only government that is responsible to implement this agreement. It is all of us, businesses, uh, individual, indigenous communities, people that are also even affected with the issue of climate change, vulnerable communities, all have a role to play. And we must also not uh, look at the government side of um, implementing this Paris Agreement. So it is not a waste of time. It is uh, an agreement that is very compact and is very flexible. And it is an agreement that is going to help us to achieve the desired carbon neutral economy that we all want. Solomon, beyond climate change, it is known that uh, effects of climate change could also affect the health of citizens. Yeah, but the World Health Organization is 
actively involved in issues of climate change. So I want to find out, though, what are some of those things uh, leaders have spoken about over there since your life in uh, Madrid? What have they spoken as regards the relationship between climate change and health and how to mitigate some of the effect? Yeah, you will, rea you will realize that uh, climate change is a big issue and uh, the one of the causes of this uh, issue is air pollution. There are a lot of carbon emission in the atmosphere. Some of the things that we do uh, back home and across the world are contributing to the, um, the carbon emission that we have in the atmosphere. And the health angle is a very serious one. Because let's take, for instance, in China, currently now because of the industrialization in that region, uh, the, the, the air pollution in that area is very intense, that people have to use no smog. So one of the things that leaders are doing now is to reduce the extent of industrialization and look at technologies that can be able to capture some of this carbon in a very fast and very appropriate manner. One of the things that I've also been uh, looked at and uh, identify is a nature-based solution, which is one of the things that we are uh, really promoting back home in Nigeria. We are, we are looking at a way by which we can have some kind of nature-based investment, such as nature parks, such as forests, that can sink all of this air and can absorb carbon. And this will help us reduce the number of uh, carbon in the atmosphere and uh, largely we also help to, to reduce air pollution. Other areas of health issue has to do with uh, uh, communities that are vulnerable to ocean surge and also our water system being degraded as a result of uh, 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 issues of climate change. However, uh, some of the leaders are looking at how they could in institute the health angle into a nationally determined contribution. Every country has their own climate action plan. And we really need to look at the health sector. Nigeria only focuses on five uh, sectors of the economy in terms of the climate action plan. But what we are looking at is to mainstream health into the NDC, which is the nationally determined contribution, and look at what that sector holds and look at the vulnerability of people and how to mitigate and adapt in that sector. All right, um, we'll come back to you, Solomon, very shortly. Let's speak with our guest right here in Lagos, Desmond Majakodomi. Now, in September, we had you here when this protest started uh, by Greta Thunberg, and we've seen how widely it has spread across uh, the world, especially the United States, where even adults have joined in the protest and all of that. Uh, notable um, actors have also been involved with this. Now, with this global surge in this youth-led climate change, uh, one is tempted to ask, Nigeria seems to be left behind. How can we replicate that in Nigeria? Yeah, I think the reality of the urgency has not permeated into the mass consciousness yet. You know, we're faced with so many everyday issues, just, you know, coming to this studio on time and so on. It's a hurdle and you're never sure, you know, so many issues, food, water and so on and so forth. However, however, the reality is there. This particular conference that uh, Solomon is attending on behalf of the Nigerian Conservation Foundation in Madrid, the Secretary General of the United Nations, he opened up the conference with this particular statement. He said that the point of no return, that is where it becomes irreversible, is no longer in the horizon. It is hurtling towards us. Meanwhile, the International Panel for Climate Change, the World Meteorological Organization, and even the World Health Organization now, they've all said the same thing, that we have been poisoning the atmosphere too much. We've been upsetting the very intricate balances of nature that provide life for everything on Earth. We've taken it for granted far too long. 
and we're upsetting it. There's only a few more years before this point of no return comes and it becomes irreversible. Already, places like Lagos mm. are under serious threat. And we need to take what they call adaptation measures, protect the place, protect Lagos. Otherwise, we're going to see far, far worse floods than what we've had. So I think it's down to the media now. And luckily, some of the international media organizations are really spreading it. This particular organization has been doing a pretty good job on a regular basis, but it needs to be far more intensive to let people know the urgency and the gravity of the situation. It is, as they say, like our house is on fire. It's just that it's a slow fire. Hmm. But if you ignore it, eventually it's like a keg of petrol in the house. And even though it's a slow fire, once it hits that keg of petrol, boom. God forbid this shall be our destiny. I didn't hear amen. Oh, well, <laughs> well, amen to that, really. <laughs> amen, a big amen to that. Yeah. Because it looks, like, um, it looks like the government is dragging their f yes. feet on this matter. Yes. It feels like they have another planet they can go to There's when no. yeah. when the explosion yeah. happens and then we're left to nowhere. Is there a place they're going to that we don't know about? There's no option B. <laughs> We've got to stay here yeah. and just be caretakers of the creation. It's not that difficult. But you know what gives me tremendous optimism as a Nigerian? The other day, just uh, two days ago, I gave a lecture. There were several hundred people in the room. I said, okay, raise your hand if you believe in God. Everybody raised their hand. If I was giving that lecture in one of the European countries, do you know that maybe only 50% of those people would raise their hands saying they believe in God? Mm -hmm. So Nigerians believing in God, I feel that we shall follow the scriptures. And the scriptures are very, very clear. In the Holy Quran, it says we are caliphs. That is, we are caretakers. And there's many references in the Holy Quran about how we should be caring for the creation, let alone in the Holy Bible. Mm -hmm. It's all over the place. In Genesis, it starts and he says, he created, let there be light. And what did he say? He saw that the light was good. good. And he continued through Genesis. At the end of the creation, he said, he saw that the creation is very good. So when we get that through our heads and we're doing something with the NCF, there's going to be a big movement next year with the faith leaders mm. to advocate this from the pulpit. That if we love the creator mm. and he says his creation is good and we're damaging the creation, then we're falling foul. Of our creator and I believe that Nigerians will do the right thing because we believe there's a God and we love our God. Absolutely. You, you talked about the point of no return earlier on. Yeah, this is what uh, Greta said at COP25. She said, we are desperate for any sign of hope. And then she says, I've given many speeches and learned that when you talk in public, she's referring to herself now, and you start with something personal or emotional like uh, our house is on fire mm -hmm. or I want you to panic or how dare you. She said that is what people will focus on. But what, what she wants today is that action, people should, be, leaders should begin to act yeah, and not just coming exactly. to COP uh, every year yeah, after talking, year. Talking, talking, yeah. receiving the travel allowance. And yes. this. No, it's gone way beyond that. There has to be concerted and definitive action mm. and we need to say, okay, ecology fund money, what's it being used for? Is uh, Hundreds of billions, have they come to protect the Lagos shoreline, which is terribly, terribly threatened? Is the ecology fund money being used effectively for planting trees, the green wall of the desert? What's happening with that green wall of the desert it was supposed to have come up several years ago to today it's moribund what's going on the people need to hold the government accountable because because our very future is at stake it's a turning point and we really have to start doing the right thing otherwise we're all going to suffer but particularly our children and that gives me hope as well because nobody wants to see nobody in their right mind wants to see their children Perish. suffering all right, let's head back to our guest via Skype, Solomon Adifolu. Uh, Solomon in Madrid. I don't know if um, countries like India and China are represented at this meeting because they are high emitting countries. And Nigeria is also one of them, even though we are not as uh, bad as China and India. But I want to know, what do they stand to lose if they should abide by this Paris Agreement? The good news is that those two countries you mentioned are well represented. In fact, I was at the Indian Pavilion uh, some days ago. It was a very lovely pavilion which led a uh, screen around. They are hooked to the Paris Agreement and uh, 
considering the fact that they are in the Paris Agreement, they are also uh, willing to oblique to the rules and regulation. Um, currently, India is doing a lot. China is also doing a lot in terms of reducing carbon within their economy. And uh, honestly, in, uh, China is putting a lot of money into the global green uh, funds for climate change, which is called the Green Climate Fund. And that is a, a lot more commitment, financial commitment, uh, that, that we really want. The replenishing uh, green fund is uh, $100 billion in a year. And Indian is putting their, uh, Indian and China, they are putting their commitment in terms of uh, financing the, 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 the climate fund, and which is going to be used for uh, delivering climate action around the world. So that a lot that kind of commitment is 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 very commendable and is something that we wish other developed countries uh can actually do. Owing to the fact that India and China are still uh uh developing, but however there is a strong commitment to them uh to deliver climate action. Fund. Yeah, um, I understand that money spent for Nigeria at some point was returned back because of uh, the method of collection. Nigeria has not been able to collect this money because they've not applied correctly. Which brings me to this question. Are you attending in different small, small groups or are you coming together as one formidable force from Nigeria? Nigeria has close to about... Uh, 80 people representing and uh, we are coming as a a group and a theme that is working together for the same nation every one of us is representing uh the group is representing nigeria and we have we are holding meetings coordination meetings side events all together however the issue of climate change and the way the, the conference work is it's a very uh dynamic conference and uh, there are quite a lot of things to follow uh in terms of the process of um getting the funds that is needed to do climate action work in nigeria it is the responsibility of the uh federal government uh under the uh department of climate change and uh, they are working closely with some of the civil society as well as um uh, um consultants to be able to get much of this funding all right solomon uh, we hope I to have you live and direct that. in our studios uh, to give us more of the experiences you had in Madrid, Spain, uh, to tell Nigerians what really we need to do urgently in order to avert uh, the disaster that is staring us at the face. But let's thank you most kindly, Solomon Adefolu, a climate action lead uh, from the Nigerian Conservative uh, Foundation. Thank you so much for your time and we wish you Godspeed when you return to the country. Thank you so much. All right, now to you. wrap up this conversation, um, Mr. Major Kodumi, this is, this is quite um, disturbing indeed, and we hope we can talk more and more about this. But it looks like some countries feel that this climate change is exaggerated. We've heard the comments of uh, the likes of the President of the United States. Mm. Really, is this, uh, is this exaggerated? Not at all. It's, in fact, underestimated. That's why the scientists are panicking, because they have what they call feedback effects. So warming here now triggers off another thing in nature that creates warming from nature, which triggers off another thing. It's a cascade effect. They are panicking. Secretary General said it's an emergency. Countries are declaring states of emergency. It is really, really serious. But the fact that some countries are denying hits at the heart of the problem. Because the problem is not even so much environmental degradation. The problem is us, our minds, our greed, okay, our selfishness. This has to change. Follow the scripture. It shall change. If we're more caring, if we truly love our God, we shall love each other and realize that, okay, money is useful, but hey, guess what? The love of money is the root of all evil. All right.
It's a safe place to land, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, we have been speaking with uh, Desmond Magic to me. Uh, he is an environmental uh, activist. We also had Solomon Adefulu, uh, Climate Action Lead, Nigerian Conservation Foundation, who joined us live from Madrid. Say thank you, gentlemen, for making time out for us today. All right, now we'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll do some sports. Stay with us. <laughs>